So this is your first look here of online co-op with Halo Infinite's campaign. A core element of what makes Halo so awesome is playing with your friends. And playing co-op campaigns has been a feature since the creation of the franchise. And for it not being there at launch for Halo Infinite, especially for how Halo Infinite plays, guys, it is a big shame. And now you finally get a chance to play it with us and now everyone else in the community together with the upcoming flight. Which within the live stream, Sketch did say that they are targeting tomorrow being Friday, the day of the reveal of the flight for everyone to jump out on play. Of course, it's still going through a certification process and if there's no errors being found or anything game breaking, then we'll be able to jump in and play. But the live stream did seem to have a little bit of an issue. The issue was, was when the party lead decided to go play a new mission, as you can see right here, the game crashed. So this is, might be something we might be seeing with the flight if it does get released on Friday. So this is something to definitely keep in mind. You know, it's pre-release software kind of stuff. These kind of things happen within the game. And also just that, I mean, this is playing like basically on LAN networking kind of co-op kind of thing. And to have like a lag out situation like that happen, we could experience this a lot with actual networking taking place when it comes to playing the flight in here. So just keep that in mind when playing to be, you know, a little patient with the uh, the status of the game. Another thing to touch on when someone like lags out, right? You try to get them back in, there is no join in progress when it comes to campaign co-op because the game kind of sets up a state of the world, right? And if someone kind of jumps in, it kind of just like doesn't really work that way. And so basically if someone lags out, you have to go back, restart the game with everyone back in the fire team. It sets up the world in that state and then you jump back in. So that doesn't really have a drop in and out kind of activity, which is a shame. I wish it did have that. That'd be a nice little function to kind of just so people can keep playing and i have to like back out restart things but you know because that's kind of how networking often works that sometimes people just drop out lag out kind of things and so that's not gonna be an option but you know we'll see if we can work around that interesting thing i want to point out with the flight build that they're playing around with is on these dev kits that they're playing on forge is an option right there that they could select so it's also being worked on, actively being worked on right now. So Forge is making some progress, at least in these early access builds that they're playing here at 343, that he can jump in and play Forge, which would be amazing to play right now. Obviously, we have to wait a little bit longer. Now, most of the information within this live stream was pretty much covered in the blog update, which I covered on the channel here. If you guys want to get all those little minute details of exactly how everything plays out, check out that video. It'll be linked in the channel here, or just click on the channel find the video look at for that thumbnail you'll find it here though to recap a few things one thing they talked about were like different collectibles right in the game where if someone already has that collectible achieved on their end the game will kind of show it as blank not playable or a selectable where someone else who has selected it or hasn't had a chance to select it they can also access that data pad and various other collectibles within the game one thing i want to talk about is that they mentioned in this game where they didn't mention this in the blog at all that with like the ammo crates that are scattered throughout the world they were actually will scale up the ammo capacity of each one of those depending on how many players are playing so obviously four players playing max amount of ammo and 343 also explained why there are four master chiefs that didn't bring your multiplayer spark in for co-op or anything like that and they said the reason why is because you're playing as master chief within the campaign continuing your master chief story right that's one thing they wanted to make sure when doing co-op that when any time you're playing co-op with friends, you're still making progress on your game and not just playing for funsies. Though, personally, I would still like to kind of break that lore aspect or reasoning behind the whole thing and still be able to play as your multiplayer Spartan. I think that'd be really awesome, but it does kind of make sense why they chose four Master Chiefs to play as, maybe down the line, but enough fan feedback, they can bring multiplayer Spartans in, we'll have to wait and see. The interesting thing they showcased was the kill barrier that's part of this. I believe it's like a thousand feet or meters or something like that when it comes to the kill radius they showcase right here exactly how big of a radius that really is so when you're getting to like the edge it will show like return the fire team they show here an example on the map how far away the player who is going to be killed in that kill radius is far from their team so you have a pretty good amount of distance where you can't be from but you can't be like completely across the map completing different aspects without you know the, your partner next to each other i don't know if this is a choice by 343 necessary to kind of for the networking thing to kind of keep working or this is just something that they wanted to implement to kind of keep teams together in some capacity if i remember correctly it's a thousand meters when it comes to the, the actual death rate radius and 800 meters when it comes to the actual uh warning sign coming up or it just could be feet either way like the numbers don't really exactly matter you can kind of see an example of how much of a distance you have to 
you know, leeway to get between players. So it's not like a whole lot, but it's really kind of designed to kind of keep players together. Interesting thing showcased here is that during the narrative events that happen in the game, like these cutscenes and stuff like that, once you get back into the game, everyone kind of teleports back to that spot of the game to jump in and play. Like right here, we had this battle right here, which <laughs> I remember playing this, you know, Bassus in the original game. Yeah, that was a really rough time. So that's kind of what happens with that section. So this will happen throughout the game as well. Once someone hits a narrative event, everyone teleports back together. Next they showcase mission replay, which we talked about on the channel here as well. Works the same way, like we mentioned in the previous video, guys, where basically you select it. And once you get a chance to actually click on the item, it gives you the option to replay it and then you get to choose the difficulty skull modifiers and things like that and you also will not lose progress on the current mission that you're on and basically it will put that mission that you select into a replay state but if you select a different mission then that mission kind of gets reverted back to its previous state no longer a replayable state and vice versa when it comes to other missions that you select so you can only have one replayable mission at a time one mission that you can resume at a time interesting bit of information at these fobs right if you guys know if you played the campaign there are four weapon crates and it's kind of interesting why they chose that and they did that because a co-op was always gonna be planned for Halo Infinite and that's why there were four crates at a fob, not for just convenience, but for functionality of having four players within your game, which is a nice little bit of information why that you know design choice was made. And an interesting bit of information that was shared towards the end of the stream right here is that they do intend to actually take Last Spartan Standing and make some significant updates to it. Sketch mentioned this, he didn't say what kind of updates to expect with Last Spartan Standing, but it should be going down for a day of the new narrative event that's happening on the 19th of this month month and then returning again as its own playlist this could be tied into like the narrative aspect of the event we'll have to wait and see but of course once we get those changes lists of what the what's going to be happening with last spartan standing and also the narrative event and everything tied to it you know i'll share with you guys here on the channel but if you're new to the channel and missed any content from me recently check out this playlist right here like i link to all my gaming news and informational videos right there so thank you so much for watching greatly appreciate it and catch you on the next one peace out